Okay, started recording. Okay, so OSC dev team meeting. Uh, so re basically reshifting around the COVID crisis and all that. Pretty much till the situation stabilizes. Right now, where increases of deaths are imminent, and that's going to happen probably for the next two months, three months, depending on what happens with the social distancing in the states and things like that. So, what are the best things we can do? So, I think on one side, we pretty much shift. I mean, forget about the business as usual. Uh, on the workshops or steam camps unless we actually organize something directly related to covid stuff interestingly i did just get a response from so so i, I did mention um 180 degree consulting which is a school group for assisting nonprofits on business development and things like that they actually responded and, and they actually are wanting to continue on the work on marketing regarding steam camps but i don't know how that's going to turn out with respect to how do we shift that to address pressing needs right now. So there's a lot of different projects going on right now uh, all over the world in terms of tech development. I think it's a chance to, I mean, one thing that's actually pretty interesting about this time is that there's a lot of open source activity going on and some really useful things are happening like stuff related to the ventilators or masks. I mean, those are all real products and, and the related development around that. So it's good to see how we can fit in there but for now i think that one of the biggest things is also coordination how do we try to coordinate everybody uh that's i mean that's a perennial issue that i don't think you know anyone really has solved uh, i think we're working on that and how do you co coordinate large numbers but i'd like to see if um so what are we doing here so i'm actually here just getting the print cluster up and well organized and actually building up more printers uh, to print real real uh, real product like the masks or uh, so masks definitely then as far as ventilators I mean there's some good work coming out there with open source design I, I mentioned on a Facebook this one Polish design too there's a number of efforts, including a Canadian $200,000 incentive mm -hmm. prize that's ending on March 31st. Um, though it's not collaborative, like typically it's not collaborative, it's a bunch of teams competing. So mm, there's some shortcomings to that in my opinion, but um, lots of different effort. And what I would propose is that, that we maybe at this time, maybe go over a little bit on, on how we can coordinate try to coordinate with the rest of the community and what some of the priority tasks are so definitely as far as as products the mask is the number one thing and I would say on a, very specifically on a mask um, let me see if I can put myself in the screen cause since I'm recording so for the mask very specifically uh, I think there's uh, the the light, latest I've seen on it is there's a bunch of designs out there, but how how effective are they? Like, what's the best one out there? Um, I think the issue is about the seal around where the plastic meets the face. And that's I'm not sure if anyone has solved that. Um, can we maybe discuss that a little bit and and see what you guys know about that, and maybe see where we can get involved on it? Because I think that's that's something we can produce. Like, I would encourage all of us here. Like say Jessica, Jeremy, I don't know if you're, you're considering building up to the more production printer like the D3D Pro or just adding a sing, another access to your existing printer, but that's something we can produce and actually meet real needs uh, if we get that down to make sure that it works. I think a printed mask with a gasket, like it would have to be a rubber gasket to make the seal tight because otherwise you've got plastic that you'd have to like heat form like... I heard stuff about polycaprolactone masks being printed, but then you have to form it with heat by submerging it in water or a heat gun. So how can we get around that so it's you have a pretty much a, a turnkey solution that works well? So to me, it seems like rubber gasket plus abundant source of filter material, which uh, I think are two outstanding issues, like in case the supply chains go down. Uh, but what do, you, what do you guys think about that? Any comments on that? I think with the rubber gasket or TPU, yeah, that's necessary. Any sort of solid face mask that you're going to wear in an industrial setting is going to be uh, rubber rubberized to get a good seal. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really soft rubber. My daughter had one yep. today. She was spray painting. It's a vapor mask. It's like super soft. Mm -hmm. So How that's do you, what, the challenge what, with those in terms of production for yeah. real use. I, there's so much production. I think I sent you the link where. 
the hospitals are in need here and they basically said just submit your thing for this link because so many people are we're 3d printing basically the same stuff you came to it comes to visors i mean what can you really on something printing pla functionally do the visor thing i think is is also true really like think, actually printing the visor the material yeah this is where i actually would like for you to speak like with the MGH doctor guy that was there. If you can do something with a closed chamber nylon, is there some is there some service that really is not billable because it, you know no industry has the the, the mechanics. Um, that's you're where saying... I think we might really move. But I but you know what you're saying is in a different place. You're talking about how do we collaborate with others? How do we collaborate? And mm -hmm. um, it just, um, you know, are, Jessica, are you... is, sorry. Go are ahead. you referring to? clear like clear 3d printing like are you questioning whether that can be done yeah i think the the real materials for effective product aren't just 3d printing obviously uh near and like chris's vacuum forming i think is more along the lines it's still not going to fit someone's face you know we've seen pictures of doctors with bruises on their face from a thing being sealed yeah. um yeah <laughs> there was this um. cdc sending on this thing about facial hair yeah right yeah i tried to print that first mask and i was like literally it immediately became an art object art project i started covering it with fur because the thing was there's no way i was going to wear that thing on my face it's like yeah yeah so i yeah. think oh. yeah go ahead so yeah so and um, i think it's different from country to country also though like here in sweden for example it's both face masks and also face shields and i think face shield is a quite common uh problem in a lot of places because they uh some of them try to as i understand some of the hospitals in both uk and in sweden like the nurses there when they are starting to run out they they boil what they already have so not necessarily putting it in an in an enclave uh which would be too hot but mm -hmm. but uh, something which is boilable that might that would be very useful for some people um and um when it comes to face shields, like I think you posted a YouTube video on uh, open source ecology workshops, and some people, some of the nurses there, they are actually making that themselves, which would be, you know, it's made from quite cheap material, so you don't need yeah. to 3D print anything. Um, basically, window sealer, uh, yeah. flexi bands, and, and, and binding covers, and um, those things would be very useful for for a lot of people. That plus plus the um, face mask um i showed the face mask like like the free printing face masks for someone who works at um uh, i don't know if it's icu or if it's emergency care mm -hmm. but um some form of emergency care doctor and one of the main concern they have with people who want to help is that if they start to run out and they start to use uh, less effective designs that it will lower what is acceptable for the nurses and, and, and for the doctors. And they, they don't want to, to lower the baseline because they don't want to put their families uh, in danger. But um, some of the some of the 3D printing would work if the seal around the filter is good and if the filters themselves are of mm -hmm. good quality. Um, yeah. And as you said, the, the surrounding area around the face, the, fa the mask needs to be sit quite tight but it should also be like sitting in a way so it so it's not just attached around the ear but around the head and preferably a little bit wider band because they're wearing it quite for a long time so so they also get some pain in the back of their heads yeah uh, yeah so making it comfortable but cheap one alternative that i was thinking about and and uh that i talked to someone at impact Hub was the possibility of maybe adding using silicon or something around the edges of a 3d printed mask i'm not sure if if silicon will attach to hard pla plastic but there are like two uh for example if you work with uh not cdi but if you work with it's hard to manage masks work, for right? movies and such like that they, they do masks and they are boilable as well i think they can take up to 160 degrees celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit but it's it's over boiling temperature and uh, then you have two sets of fluid plastic which when you blend it together after a while it form and it sets uh, so maybe something like that. I like that. So you're saying 3D printed dipped in some sort of like soft rubber, essentially. That's yeah, just, basically. That well, would look so disgusting. Um, it would be awesome. It would work, I think. You know, well, I think so it would actually about, perform. So let's take a look at this. Take one of the existing masks, go into Blender. Design a, like, I think if we think about module-based design, then we can talk about 
modify the existing mask and add the gasket. The gasket could be like a tube that attaches to the edge of the mask. And it's a hollow tube, so it's squeezable. It can squeeze. It's soft, and it's printed from TPU. So I think maybe we can get on top of that. What do you guys think? So you mean like one tube, which can be used for many multiple different okay. masks? So, you know? Wait, so that it's printed from what was that? CPU? Is that what you said? TP, TPU, thermoplastic urethane. That's a common oh. uh, 3D printing filament. So I would really go forward with that in terms of... So think about the face, kind of like a triangle shape like thing. Put an edge on it, uh, a rib that you can essentially... So the, the gasket would look like that. It would be a tube with a hollow, like a little bit... I mean, so it's this would be a circle tube, but make a little indent in the tube so there's like a little indent in there that that, that indent can attach to, say this is the edge of the mask, it can attach like that, and then this gasket... The screen is frozen. Oh, it's frozen? For me, at least. Okay, yeah. uh, now you're back. Okay, so that's your gasket. It's got a little indent, so this is rubber, hollow rubber, 3D printed. You, you put it on the edge of the mask like that. So, um, mm. so it, it, it's like yeah. that, and then it grabs, and you can replace that, so you can. If it's soft, it. that yeah, if that's really soft. Yeah, yeah. So I would propose that, but okay. I mean, does it can... have to be three D printed, or could it be just a material at source? Like if we're okay, just cutting so, a piece of something. Yeah, sure, but then you have the edge problem, the end problem. How do you seal up the end? So with a three D print, you can print a complete right. enclosed structure and you're knocking out the thing of if you buy it off the shelf or you get a gasket like the thing that goes on the doors of cars mm -hmm. you know yeah. all those soft rubber pieces yeah. yeah but how do you connect the edges together that's a danger spot unacceptable or overlap it and clip the 3d print just overlaps and clips it'd be that's interesting I cool like that. but that's you know mm -hmm. um i guess that's doable but but once again a danger point like if it's uh if we're talking about a a reusable mask you want to take that whole thing off you can dip one in your alcohol, dip the other in the alcohol, and you got it sterilized. Or what I'm thinking, like, I think what really would be cool is... I, I think we think, like what you just said, assume that they will repeat use, and they're going yeah. to know how to maintain. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Uh, they're planning on that. My mother, I mean, my aunt, actually, she's sending... She was doing covers for her, my cousin. Yeah. Covers for her mask out of a bathing suit. I was like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> It's, yeah, people are getting very crafty. <laughs> right. So, okay, but let's talk about collaboration, though. So, so I mean, we can talk about this. We can do some things, but there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's more powerful to talk about how we get more people involved and try to coordinate the existing efforts a little more. So, what I would propose is maybe like spend, uh, just maybe go through a little bit in this meeting about how to collaborate and how do we spawn uh, ready design efforts that are that are modular in nature, so that. We're developing, like in OSE, we develop module, we do it by modules, like module based design. So we can design modules and then treat each of them as a development point. And these are essential components of other things. So, say one module could be, okay, this gasket that then would have to be fitted to a mask or a pressure, uh, an adjustable digital, no, I'd say a digital pressure gauge for the, the ventilator or whatever other projects. Like, for example, I, emailed the Polish guys on the ventilator. They said they're interested in collaborating on open source solenoid valves or uh, pressure gauges and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different things we can do, but how do we coordinate it? So what I would propose is that um, if you let me uh, just go through a little bit of what a collaborative effort would look like, because from the perspective of collaborative development, like. I can critique a lot of different efforts out there. Like, for example, there's the uh, useful engineering project. Right now, basically, the guy said, okay, this ran out of control. There's like 10,000 people working on it. But they're basically what they're doing right now is taking each of the sub projects on their Slack channel and saying, okay, which ones are actually working or doing something. So they ended up like sort of trying to coordinate effort. They're saying, okay, these are the best efforts that are coming out. So they're running into the issue, which, I mean, we've seen that years ago is after a certain point the project just blows up you can't tr keep track of anything right so that's that's one example or the other example MIT event the ventilator where they're kind of working behind closed doors and then they're releasing stuff but then nobody's collaborating um, they're releasing it as open source I've yet to see the design I mean I asked them about a week ago um, 
but it's it's like how do you crack the collaboration nut so once again it's like this collaborative literacy thing so let me go over like some of the main points regarding it that we, we should keep track of so we can go forward and I'd ask I'd like to ask you guys to see if you can get, you can step up as uh, kind of like project managers project managers or coordinators or maintainers for each of the sub projects so let's go with it uh, on a, my log I put a thing called uh, large-scale collaborative design on March 26 so so 12 11 points to keep in mind so, so for basic large-scale collaboration because once again the problem statement here is there's tons of people working on different stuff is it getting anywhere is it getting to useful products okay so first it has to be focused right now with with COVID there is a focus of COVID but around COVID there's like a hundred or a thousand different things people are doing right including like a hundred different masks and things like that so but so how do you gain a, a larger set of bunch of focus that's a question scalable platform like you, you got to be able if you're gonna track a lot of progress you, you need a scalable platform a wiki does that for example so I mean that's why we use the wiki here you have to have collaborators like an awareness of who all the collaborators are so for example like this the scrummy thing that we used or just a map of um, people that are working on a project just a simple bunch of links to people working on it yeah everyone ha each collaborator has to be aware of who all the other collaborators are uh, there has to be a good place for documentation so it's not just like threads like say there's a slack channel thread that's kind of like discussion there needs to be formalized documentation that's organized around the development process so here's where we have the standard product development template on a wiki and I'll, I'll show what we have because we can deploy that actually quite quickly task division uh, that's a Kanban board that's basically scrummy so if you can take a big project and divide tasks you can accept a lot of people it requires a modular breakdown prototyping has to happen so somebody has to have uh, 3d printers or do calculations partial prototypes test driven design we should have a way to invite review could be a simple thing like a review form or posting on a on on social media or actively inviting seeking and, and inviting subject matter experts SMEs to the thing this to be a communication channel like video social media slack or Facebook or whatever um, there should be a clear channel for communication there has to be a so one thing that's missing from our our stuff I would say is the upvoting um, so things like stack overflow or stack exchange or hacker news they're good examples of um, upvoting sites where if if say there's like a hundred pages on a slack channel how do you actually distill what's actually getting somewhere that's the part that we could work on and actually uh, I asked the guys from Hacker News if you you know if you know Hacker News um, have you guys seen it so Hacker News uh, click on it it's basically a site which has got a bunch of threads but you upvote them so the best stuff goes to the top so say we're talking about masks uh, the question becomes what is the best mask we can do and then like thousands of people can go into that look for masks and then upvote to okay now the one that wins is likely uh, the best one possibly is the one that people upvote the most I mean but it's a good way to to filter content um, and last is uh, that effort has to have some application like either we're dog fooding it or we're <laughs> distributing the product to, to users like hospital people and EMT workers first line workers so that's a general thing but with that said um, what do we have for OSE I put up this thing called um, <clears throat> go to C, uh, C as the short code for it but COVID development <clears throat> so I put up uh, a few things open source respirators face shield open source paper ventilator and medical components construction set um, safety and medical components construction set well uh, so each of these so take a look at the open source respirator so there's a development template so what I would propose that each of us maybe like um, since there's three of us here three or four uh, maybe each of us could kind of own one of these and make them into decent platforms like for example we already have so we got this other Kanban board here uh, the development spreadsheet I want to show you the magic of this thing so you see this big thing are you screen sharing ah, or we ah, okay screen sharing thank you let me do that okay take a look at this so <clears throat> can you see it now yes okay thank you. so 
so the page on the wiki is COVID development. You can get to it by simply typing in C. It links to COVID development. Take open source respirator. On it, we have a development template. So that's that's more or less, if you know product development, that's standard items of product development from a formal product development process. Um, but you can invoke that if you click edit on there. Don't click edit there. Edit, click edit at the very top, and see what happens. Look at it. That whole temp, uh, development spreadsheet was invoked by this one line here. Do you guys see it? So basically, yeah. let me emphasize that. So the way templates work on the wiki, we can st start one of these immediately. So for example, let me give you a better example. The the ones through twenty are this are the the state of development. Like you see the percentage of development from one to ten. Um, but using that one line, edit this one line here, we can start a template. So let's let's do that for Jessica's development. Take a look at this. So test. I'm going to put a, a wiki page called test. Uh, and then edit, and I'm going to put this one line. It's a template that's defined. The double bracket means it's a template. And we do that. Zero is the actual topic. So we, we're going to say Jessica's um, development on the face mask. <clears throat> and look what happens. See that? Now, each of them is a placeholder already, so you start dev developing that. What's the requirements? Well, Jessica, what are your requirements? You said you said hair, <laughs> fur, <laughs> uh, save page. So that page, you know, uh, it, if we go back here, look at that. So already there's some content there. And those things are not appearing because we didn't... See, the template looks like this when you edit this, but you, that's like the actual template. But you have to go to the very top edit to see how it really looks. It's just this one line template. So like that, we can basically see the entire project. So what I would suggest is maybe uh, uh, knowing that we can start projects um, readily. And can I get you guys to maybe like own one of these four pages that we have right now? Uh, I'll take the, so on a C page, that's like open source ventilator. I'm working a bit on that. I you know started doing stuff like, um, but I want to take this. Can you guys kind of like manage each of those pages and make them better? Like I put there's I think uh, actually Benoit from France he embedded what are the other this. Three, so. Yeah, so um, it's on a C page, COVID development. So respirator, face shield, paper, ventilator. And then safety medical components construction set. So I think the, the biggest thing we want to communicate to people is that, yeah, we kind of got at the end of the day to make pr the development process really good. You got to organize a lot of material. Uh, so, for example, like the, the main thing that you got to look for is this whole development template of all the items that need to happen. I mean, it's the basic stuff. It's from design, bill of materials, build, data collection. And that way we can actually coordinate it effectively. And the cool thing about this is we can actually do this very modularly. Like here we're developing the on this one, the face mask. But if you have um, module breakdown, it's, it's not done here, but I know it's done under ventilator. Module breakdown, look at that. So I just embedded this, but there's a bunch of stuff that are modules in, an, in a ventilator. Each one of them could become a, its own development template, you know, like pressure sensor, oxygen sensor, pressure relief, whatever, Erlen, blah, 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 this and that. Um, but basically, like tr trying to explain that we can modularize this development process in a really effective way and have people actually put stuff where it should be, like along a formal development process, which has at least those 20 development items. So as we go forward, I would say if we are developing anything, we can use this kind of a basic template and that's this is what we've been using throughout time already but what you see is all the time it's about missing the people to to fill in all the, the different aspects of the, the development like 
like there's 20 things right here each one of them is a bunch of work right so we're always missing people to do it but at this time there's a lot of people out there working on stuff so maybe we can try to coordinate um, more people doing uh, organizing information in an effective way so that there's a very clear product in mind like like say solving the mask like what is the best thing we can do right now it's an unsolved problem as far as I'm concerned um, even though there's so much effort going around it so comments suggestions Um, so this is after, are you thinking that this is done for all the proposals or after there has been a selection and review of proposals? Um, well, I'm thinking I would say, of like wider collaboration. Yeah, I would say like, let's, um, I think the way to think about it is, is to say, t select a few projects that we can actually participate in. Like I mentioned in what I said before like the the criteria for a scalable process you want to have an owner for here large scale collaborative design look at item number 11 application so based on the application thing that means that we would like us like the four of us here we would select something that we we can do some work on and then we would develop on that so yes we would borrow from many many projects out there because the good thing about right now is that so much information is getting generated and technical information organizational information like for example doctors getting involved in direct feedback on what a ventilator is and how it should work I mean there's all these spec documents and all this so we can borrow off all the existing knowledge out there to uh, coordinate focus development number one focus like that's the thing like focus on something clear uh, clear requirements, clear product that we can then do right now for immediate needs, but also then turn it into a product at the end of the day, like after the crisis is over, we can actually be making face masks as a real product, real high quality product and stuff like that. Uh, does, did that answer your question? Um, or partly, but uh, I guess my question is like how, because there's, let's say, uh, there are hundreds of different types of face masks. Yeah. And um, so you would need to choose one face mask probably before you start yeah. creating it. So let's talk about the development process. That's here. The development template has industry standards, right? And that's where we study everything. Uh, so you can take a click on any of those items, like how we do them. But for industry standards, you do exactly what you just said. There's a hundred of them. Which do you pick? Okay. Well, you have to assess yeah. which is the best. So the outcome of industry standards would be, okay, I'm going to select one and probably go with it. Go on to conceptual design thinking, okay, I'm going to borrow these, this one piece from here, all these hundred different pieces from hundred different places. I'm going to propose this. And then mm -hmm. you start doing the concept then you can break it down into modules. So say you can then gather a team of people say, say you've, you've evaluated that and you say, oh, uh, this is good for these reasons. And it's, there's some consensus around it. And you can break it down and um, develop it more modularly with more people, or you can just go about doing it by yourself. Um, but the module breakdown is there so you can uh, involve other people. And then you go into other things like CAD and so forth. So, so add the industry standard to conceptual, like with the industry st standards, that's like the critical thing we're at right now. Like, how do you assess what's out there to, to do a f good forward direction? And then maybe the outcome of that would be, oh, there is uh, one that actually fits the bill. Possible, right? But it has to meet our requirements. Number mm -hmm. one, it has to be open source, distributed manufacturing, easy supply chains, uh, whatever uh, the OSC specifications follow. Like if you click on, on requirements, um, this is, um, describes what we do for requirements. And one of the first things you read is, okay, well, it's got to follow some OSC specifications for module based scalable design and so forth. But that's kind of how it works. And, and the thing is, I think the missing thing right now in a, in a world is that, uh, people kind of aren't familiar with this process, but this is a very standard kind of, a. I would say a development process where you take something from scratch, you, you, you say, okay, there's something and I want to open source it or make access to it, start producing it. Uh, you have to go through some of these steps and which starts with uh, selecting what the best option out, out there is. 
Mm. And I don't know the answer gotcha. to that right now. Like right now, all, all right. I know is that, okay, we've got this cool mask, say from the Billings Clinic in Montana. That's a good one. Um, but it's, they're st actually still working on a seal. Like it's, it's not sealed. Like, so the first thing would be, okay, start Googling. Is there some good seals already developed for these masks? And then maybe it already exists because yesterday happened and today is a new day. Uh, so maybe we just go from that. If not, we go into conceptual design, CAD, start designing it ourselves and maybe try funneling people to, to this work. Like say there's good work on, um, uh, say open source COVID equipment list or the useful engineering group. What I mean, there's many people working. We can say we can start discussions there, perhaps direct people to this. If, if there is no clear good repository, if it's just discussion as opposed to technical development, because discussion is one thing, Facebook and and uh, Slack and other things are one thing. But then you have to, at the end of the day, organize it and, and make concerted development happening around it. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. Um, All right. Yeah. But there are some clear priorities, like, okay, there's the, the, the respirator, good seal around it. I mean, maybe start with that. If we, I mean, we can all maybe go on it and communicate around it, focus the, maybe the, the Slack channel on that, maybe. Uh, that's one way to go. Um, I like that idea. I mean, I'm just getting, because I listened to your present, this, this whole method of working is new, right? And I like the idea of all focusing on the one at a time. I think that could work just as a, this is how we go about product development. Mm -hmm. We should do that with a mask and a seal, yeah. I think. Okay. Mask and a seal. Let's do it. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that's that's a really cool thing because, like, we need those mm -hmm. masks around here for shop and stuff absolutely. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. So, yeah. So let's do it. Let's, uh, let's gather around it. Now, what I would propose here, it's like, so on... So not not the ventilator page, but uh, the C page right here. So we click on the open source respirator. Um, yeah, open source respirator. Uh, let's make that page a little better. Like so, I see the so so like okay, we can go with this uh, allocated tasks. Hopefully this works. So um, Jessica, we're vol volunteering you for. New personal project? No, cancel that. How, how does this work? Add something to the backlog. So um, we should actually, N95 mask, or Wait. we should say design. I'll try to model face the mask. face part. I'll look, Google the face seal and try to model one. 3D CAD. If there, we already have a file for the model, mask part, right? Model the gasket? Yeah. No, the gasket. Model what? The seal of the face. Yeah, which is a gasket. I can't print it though. So that right now that is my annoyance. I'd say with the can. stuff I tried to do. You need some TPU. I can. Well, you can yeah. get some TPU I filament. Need to, in just a second. Okay. Okay. Uh, you need to go online and get TPU. some. Oh, let me see your face. Say it again. I'm TPU, a deaf. TPU thermoplastic TPU. urethane. TPU oh. filament. Um, go to my log and there's a recent entry that says TPU filament on March 25. <clears throat> So basics. Okay. Let's see. Uh, source. I would like to see some sourcing. If I had some sourcing in there. Okay. Eric's deleting my sourcing there. Where's the sourcing? Okay, so for example, on this, I, I, I know I had the sourcing there. Like, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of getting a ton of pellets from China because we'll need it. Um, TPU filament. Uh, oh, I saw I was muted. Sorry. Martian, are you screen sharing? Oh, yeah. Let me sh screen share again. Great. Thanks. So go to TPU. TPU page. I know there's a, an inversion history. I know I put at least one source in there. So we want to do this. So add this to sourcing. 
Now this is for the condition when TPU is gonna run out. It may run out, I don't know. But I wanna get the filament maker up and running here so that we can make it if we need to. So sourcing pellets right there. You can get them for 50 cents um, to a dollar per, per pound if you get a ton from China. So look at this, you go to Alibaba. You have TPU pellets, they're clear pellets. But now you go to Amazon. Um, uh, just Google that TPU on Amazon, TPU filament on Amazon. Let's see, this page is called TPU. I think there's another page called TPU filament, or is that the same thing? No, it's the same thing. Yeah, it comes already. They're two, three, three dollars a roll. Yeah. Um, so I just got some more. That I got like a couple of rolls here to, to play with because I wanted to print the bellows for the, uh, the ventilator. But. Yeah, so that's what you can do, TPU. Um, so filament, let's add a link to TPU filament. Um, I think I'll go to my uh, smile.amazon.com and I just got some, so I'll this show you what cool. I got. There's, there's a roll for, oh, there it is. No, that's PTG. Yeah, I got this one. It's delivered today. Gizmo Dorks 3mm 2.85. Make sure it's 2.85, not 3.0. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one actually... was smaller, 1.75 or something. Two lots, it was different size. No, this one, this one, Gizmo Dorks, 30 bucks, 3mm. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I. Color user. So let's see, like if we save that, what happened there? So model the seal, how do we add a user to that? Uh, how do we add a person there? See, this is, actually it's scrummy, uh, but they're closed source and shut down. So um, how do we add a user to that? Um, status open, so maybe user, user. Let's just put Jessica to it. Yeah, and if we have, so let's see, like um, board. You want to put on a board. Oh, yeah, there. Um, so this I think you can drag. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so that works well. You can drag it from backlog to ready to work in progress and then done yeah so that, that works like right in the browser or within the wiki so that's pretty cool um, so I'm gonna add um, get sourcing of, of uh, filter material document sourcing that blue save that I'm ready for that okay um, I would say for the backlog uh, there's a lot of tasks you can do here but you can do like a, do a tutorial on how to do this in blender blender tutorial for <laughs> See, this is where we gotta hit Blender because FreeCAD is gonna be very limited on this Blender tutorial for um, irregular shapes. Yeah, I think it's really time to crack Blender oh, at this point. Nice. So, Blender is okay. Yeah, I mean, FreeCAD I'll is now. <laughs> very limited. Hmm?
all the platforms are interestingly limited. That's a, it's been really interesting looking at the plot, the whole OC platform. I mean, it's good though. I get why it is what it is. It's just, um, yeah, it how do I change provide the... its own challenges, right? Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's point, about using a lot of different tools, like the wiki, you can embed all kinds of tools in the wiki. Yeah. So it's a modular you know, approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also is similar, similar to what people are having to do now that they are, trying to do everything from home all the mm -hmm. private all the privacy of this stuff is going to quickly become a problem you know it's like <laughs> blender everyone has their own accounts for everything what do you mean privacy is going to be a problem their own industry their own institution accounts and things you know like can't actually yeah it's a conversation yeah. and shared information I mean, the, the need for it to be modular and small. It's, it's just interesting. The whole yeah. thing's interesting. Yeah. I can probably do figure out figure Blender out pretty quickly, though. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. they, they're similar. It's just a matter of the issues tend to be file size and um, you just, yeah, what, what functions you can perform to keep it under certain file sizes. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't even when you start doing anything a bit more complex in terms of formal objects, it, it the files just get bigger but not enormous they're yeah, still quite small there's bigger a process. than what we're trying to work with yeah there's a if you want to read more about that file simplification there's a wiki page on that yeah no i know i get yeah. it it says but again as soon as you do anything more complex in terms of objects like booleans and mm. you know yep um now there's a check this thing out like there's a good way to, this is html css but that's what we kind of need on the page so let's see let's see if i can uh this is benoit did this little thing here but we want to do like an intro video so probably like i'll put this team meeting video uh let me see if i can edit that and put that into our page um like say the working page on the yeah, let's let's do that. I'll uh, dashboard. So, and what does uh, X collaboration? Stand this for? was for Summer X, Summer of Extreme Design Build. We started oh, that, okay. but um, so let's copy that and go to. Do you know some HTML CSS, Andreas? Um, I recognize it and I can like <laughs> configure it. Yeah. So let's. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if we can make these windows appear as H, like put this all into nice windows with HTML, CSS. Like I'll put this more at the bottom. Uh, so dashboard, it's kind of dashboard where you can see everything that's going on. But yeah, we can start replacing those. Like for example, as soon as I publish this video, I'll embed the, the video from this meeting an yeah. appropriate place. Now what happened there? No. I don't say that. Yeah. That. It looks like it's there now. Oh, where? I just refreshed the N95 page and it's all at the bottom. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's well, halfway up. Yeah. I don't know, who did that? Did I just do that? <clears throat> I did not. <laughs> View history, who did that? I, I think I just did that. Yeah, that was me. What? Or was it? I'm looking at version. Did Benoit just do that? No, that was way before. I think I just did it. Okay. Um, but that's so. Like we can go with um, like maybe under this dashboard page. You know, maybe have a video on how how do you do this collaborative development thingy? But you really have to listen to the uh, the collaborative literacy webinar. I mean, I kind of lay out how to, how that's done. Uh, but it's um. It's a thing of, it's culture. It's like people have to understand this process. Uh, but, you know, we can start. It's kind of onboarding, understanding video. Yeah. 
Uh, and you had a video, a collaborative literacy video. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, where, where, which is the mask you think is most interesting at this point? Where would the file be? It should be on that page, right? On the wiki which, page? Which file? For the Billings mask, I guess. You put oh, it what on. Happened? A, Why did all these things turn? What happened there? Why, why did these all turn blue? Holy cow. Maybe the CSS file changed. Oh man, the CSS color. file messed stuff up. Okay. Huh. I'll go take a look at it. Hang, give me a few minutes. Okay. Well, uh, so I think definitely the, the tasks allocation is good. Uh, so that if there's a bunch of people coming in here, we can actually see what who's doing what. Um, maybe we want to go. With. Um, Because once we have, like, if we develop this page to to that we have, okay, guys, this is it. It works. Do it. We can promote it and get some meaningful work done. Um, one thing to do here under item two industry standards, like, let's get 10,000 people working on that so we, we can all identify, okay, this is a consensus that says, hey, this is the best thing or this is what's needed to do to be done let's do it right now like for example Chris he could probably design our seal right now Chris if you're watching this do it uh, others will learn blender in the meantime or Michelle or Chris are cap blender capable um, I think what I want to do in the video log let's see what's a good So RC systems diagram, so it's yeah, it actually links to that right there. Nah, but that's like a that's a nonsense diagram. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's see. Let's edit that out. I'll put in a more relevant diagram of uh, collaborative development. So let's see. I think that's this one. So the first thing we could do is maybe like take that template that we just put in there and annotate it fully so that people can change it rapidly. Like for example, it's not well annotated. Like, for example, where is the first image that appears in a an actual visual view? Like, is it right there? I think it's right there. We should maybe annotate that. Uh, yeah. So f we can al annotate this by saying, okay, first window, stuff like that. You mean as a description for people to copy this into new products as well and not yeah. only m five? Yeah, absolutely. So for example, if you click on X collaborate, okay, first of all, change that to COVID development dashboard. So as we go to COVID development dashboard, collaboration dashboard, you edit that Wait, what happened? To... Dashboard. What? Ah, shit. I think what's going on there? The dev template. Ah, oh, I see what's happening there. I'm messing up the dev template. Um, okay, I gotta. refresh that view history oh Jeremy um, that was you I fixed the CSS um, are you on this page right here the dev template no, um, no on, a C, on a mask page right that's where I was I'm pretty sure okay 
I need to restore this this one here. Twenty seven March. Wait, twenty four. The CSS is easy. It's just one line, so go back wherever you need to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I accidentally put the that development template the the dashboard on the original template. Ah. So I'm gonna just re restore that. <clears throat> So I'm gonna click on that version before that change. Edit on that. Control A C. And then this. Oh yeah, now the thing disappeared from the the, the actual s face mask page. Um, we're gonna do it again then. So, so X. X collaboration dashboard, okay. Just looking at what you have on the testing. This is the three dollar Bangladesh test was approved. Did you post that? I did. Martin, what was the? Th do you, what was that? Do you know? Remember? Uh, I'll click on it, but uh, Google it. Yeah, I'll look. I, I just think the testing issue is yeah, yeah, really bizarrely is. interesting. Uh, that's what actually floors me because uh, I just heard you know the. 40% of the returning cases that are coming back into China are all students. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so for example, if we do this template for the N95 mask, if you want to just like start really coordinating that effort and do the, what we're doing here. So if you refresh on the open source N95 face mask, the way to get there is open source face mask. No. Source respirator. It's going to be open source respirator. It's open source respirator. So if you refresh on open source respirator, <clears throat> there it is. Uh, so what, probably what we could do is if you guys can help on that, just make the dashboard a little better. Uh, so we've got this system diagram. So probably what we want to put there is um, what do we put there? What's relevant is organizing information. How to develop collaboratively, I think. Overview of collaborative development. Um, or what we really want there how is... About, yeah, go ahead. How about some kind of like uh, N95 like mission or like just what okay. it is so that people get a a uh, chance to orient themselves which web page are about. Um, okay. um, yeah. I know how to make that prettily. So pretty. if you click on edit there, I'd say the first thing to do there is if we work from there, let's do let's annotate that thing a little better. So let's say first window. You know, First window. How do you make comments in there in HTML? There. Um, left bracket exclamation point dash dash. 
left bracket. Our left um, carrot. I don't know what's the. <laughs> Like this? Shift com shift comma no the same thing as an HTML tag uh, for the first character. Okay, that. Like the opening of an HTML tag. So like that. Uh, just like the character. No, just like the in front of the A there. Wow, I don't know what oh, that's called. Carrot. I think it's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I posted it in. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. first window is it there? Yep, and then dash dash, and then close the tag. Um. Without, yeah, exactly. I think that's it. Okay, first window. Yep. So that if we set it up on another page, we have this formatting already there and it looks decent. Um, okay, so it's 2.58. I gotta get going uh, pretty soon. What are our next steps here? Oh, what can we divvy up? Maybe a few small tasks for everybody. <clears throat> so, I mean, we get, need to get the dashboard in order, I guess, and, mm -hmm. and maybe also some introduction for the uh, web page. Um, I can look on those two things. Oh, why don't you do um, a, a little, um, so replace that, take that first window, you work it, put in a, an editable Google Doc in there, and we yeah. can contribute to it. And then that link should link to that doc so we can edit it. And yep. general policy, I think we should we should keep it open, even though there's going to be like thousands of people. Keep it open, I would say, for anybody to edit. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, just keep it, keep that, so people can, because in Google Docs, you can restore old versions, so we're not going to lose stuff. Um, yeah. So that's a very explicit project right now. So model the seal and let's work on the seal. And I think that's kind of like the problem statement at the very top is de one, develop a proper seal for 3D printable reusable mask. Two, document sources of ready available filter material supplies everywhere, like around the world. Three, print and test masks. So, so the first thing as I talk about in collaborative literacy, this is about potentially getting thousands of people involved so we like nail this problem in a second. It's a hard task, but uh, we have to frame the tasks for wide collaborations for example on point number two document sources of ready available filter material supplies everywhere in the world so that the person from china can do that from australia and we have a big list um print test test and test masks work I mean work with obviously work with others um, we do want to add a review like a thing that's some some spreadsheet here that should be like review so we could for example say hey uh, we did this work so far review it it could be as simple as a as a Google form that a, that shows the results there like some doctor could say hey this doesn't have a proper seal or this is good it worked for me or whatever and you can make that public We could probably go with, do you guys want to do like three windows across or just two windows across on the dashboard? Well, I want to be responsive, but maybe that's too much. Um, <laughs> I guess the two windows. Yeah, two that's windows. what I was thinking too. Two. <laughs> okay. Two. Let's just see if we can do it with two, six like that, two, two, two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to it's manageable. Um, Yep. Any other commitments that people can do? Like uh, I put myself under sourcing a filter material. Jessica's gonna model seal. I can call out for somebody to do a small blended tutorial. Um, um, I might have some access to some test equipment if we ever want to. Um, if we want to start certifying something after, mm -hmm. or at least doing some basic, you know, they do like the particulate test when you get fit okay. tested for a respirator. Um, I know a couple people who might have that equipment that I could um, bring our sample product to and actually find out, does it filter out, you know, 90% or 95%. Um, okay, very cool. Um, maybe you can document that under, so under links, 
just so some of saying, the normal fit test procedures that they use because yeah. we're just going to have to yeah. meet that you know yep. at some point at yep. some point yeah, it's yeah. going to get to where you want to be able to certify it yep. um so mass so test procedures that, that yep yep uh do they put that like so do they have like a dummy 3d printed dummy maybe we could produce that 3d printed dummy and whatever systems go around that mask test <laughs> procedures um yeah yeah do you see that link? often so, the, the, yeah. the fit testing stuff i've been a part of is um you modify the mask mm -hmm. so that you can have a sensor inside it and mm -hmm. then you don it and um mm -hmm. then they then you get like it's a non-toxic type particulate uh, mm -hmm. like a smoke or something and um you mm -hmm. wear it for x amount of time and find out what comes through based on what that sensor gathers then you can test for the fit as well as the filtration capacity Nice. Okay. Yeah, if you can document that there are mass test procedures, it's linked there. It's pretty cool. Um, that would be great. So so we're basically calling out that this is like we're not just doing some BS mask. This is actually going to turn into a real thing. It's going to be an open source thing. It's got test procedures and, and uh, certification that are at the end of the day. So it's not a frivolous project. It's something that's substantial for the world. Yep. Excellent. Um, okay, let's see where we are in um, next week, yeah, and continue the discussion. Is the Slack channel being active, or maybe we can embed it in one of the windows? I don't know if it's embeddable like that. Um, I don't know if it's embeddable without plugins like that, but we can link it and there will be a small picture to, to yeah. page, I think. Yeah, we could do that at the very least. least uh, link to it what really would I would like to see here and as I pointed out and um, I'm gonna link that there the process for large-scale development just some basics requirements around it uh, I'm gonna link that large-scale collaborative design I'm gonna create a link from respirator to Open source res. Open source respirator. Large-scale collaborative design. So I mentioned uh, one of the aspects of large-scale collaborative design is uh, distillation part. Like um, Benoit is actually looking into the Hacker News platform for upvoting. See if we can get that. I think that would be important. Yeah. We've talked about that forever. It's time to do that. There's AskBot and uh, Maker News, the uh, Hacker News. AskBot, as I know, we could. That's an open source platform for upvoting. Stack Overflow is not open source. They don't have the you don't have that code available. But um, okay, let's do this. Um, yeah, let's see where we are. So keep communicating. See if this we can do the Slack there. I know there's a little bit of discussion on the Slack, but for now it's like let's distill what the best one is and see how we can gear up production of it and meet local needs or local or remote needs. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, and let's like I think it's good to like trying to get some kind of momentum on Slack so it doesn't die out as well even if it's like just small questions. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so if you make it in the put it in the dashboard, people will use it. Yeah, if it's easy to access yeah, in one yeah, place, that'd true. be good. Um, yeah, I don't know how the limitations are now. Um, I think anyone it might work with unlimited and free edition. So I'll I'll add a link and then we see okay. for how long it will work. More or less. Um, less. Okay, sounds good. Okay, guys, nope. gotta yeah. get rolling here.
Uh, see you guys next week at the least. Mm -hmm. yep, see you. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.